I decided, uh, being that I was going to put one of these priest toolkits on my machine, that I might as well also build a power down feed for this. Um, as you can see there, $15 for a can of primer. This is actually uh, white paint going on now. The last one was primer. Pulled that thing once, sprayed that little bit, and that was it for the can. Nothing more. Total waste of money on the primer. Anyways, it got painted up pretty nicely here, and uh, I, the, the color didn't match exactly what uh, my little mill is, but it, it's close enough. It, it, it You know, for all intents and purposes, it's, it looks quite well in there. Uh, after getting this thing uh, painted up and everything, the next thing was, uh, well, I talked to Greg at Priest Tools, and we we both understood and knew after sending pictures back and forth and diagrams and that, that this uh, was not going to be a straight fit. As you can see here, there's, there's a cap on top of the lead screw, and the actual nuts are above, whereas on the Precision Matthew, those nuts are actually down underneath that top plate. So, you know, it was a matter of pulling those off, and uh, Greg supplied me with uh, a cap right there that actually screws right onto it, and then it's just a matter of, uh, you know, making some spacers for that uh, motor to sit up on top. So for that, you know, pretty straightforward. Um, hindsight, I wish I would have looked at the instructions when I was building this thing because I, I, I did make a, a couple oversights here on uh, on my bolts. Nonetheless, uh, it was just a matter of, you know, putting this thing on there and getting it secured and getting it together and then getting it up on the machine to see how much clearance I needed for those uh, spacers between the two two things. And uh, it turned out uh, to be exactly two and a half inches plus, you know, the, the amount that screwed into the bottom and that I just got off from the, the screws that came out of there and then uh, incorporated those screws onto the top so you know here's going on uh, one other thing on this uh, for the bolt pattern i did have to do it reverse so everything was facing inwards to the wall for tightening up the uh, the wires going in so i did put the wires on ahead of time and then put the whole assembly up there afterwards um, so yeah, two and a half inches. So now it's time to uh, make some spaces for it. And I went with the same idea I did when I built the uh, the handle for the taps, where I'd use those bottom screws in the top of these spacers and just thread the bottom of the spacers exactly like those screws that came out. And that way you're torquing out on just one head to get the thing top and bottom all tightened up. Uh, I figured, you know, got lots of room on that two and a half inches, so no no sense uh, cutting it short and worrying about having to get those threads tapped into a, a bottom. So I, I, I put the uh, put the depth bit much further down than it actually needed to ensure that these things were easily assembled. Uh, and you actually hear the, the screw going into it. It bottoms right out into that and already where it is now. That's much thinner than the plate on the, that is going to go into the top. So, you know, it was just uh, pretty simple to make those things. Uh, and as I said, they're two and a half inches. And, you know, after the top got done going into to the bottom here and getting my maximum diameter for that thread and then coming in later and uh, just threading that with a, a chase and die of all things. Um, it, it worked. Um, these are metric, and I've never had my lathe set up for a metric thread. And I really, really am hesitant to doing it. Like, it's, it's not the worst thing in the world, but uh, my luck, I forget it was in there and start threading something imperial and really mess it up. So, you know, at, at this point, uh, I do have to take this apart again because I am going to use that bottom plate there as a template to uh, get the holes in the right position for this. And a lot of times I think, ah, you know, good enough's good enough. But this is one occasion where I do have to say I I, I was pretty precise on, on getting exact measurements and very little on the tolerance for mounting that motor. And you can see there, you know, that on that plate, the, these, uh, these spacers are just going to go in and screw into the bottom. And at the same time, they're going to screw into that top plate right there. Uh, so the next thing, of course, was to take this all apart after, you know, seeing how it worked. And I need to get a measurement on these holes. 
I, I feel a lot more comfortable making a little plug that actually sits within these things to hold them together uh, than I do just try to line them up by eye and with a caliper. So, you know, a, a little more work on the lathe and made that part and brought it back. And my tolerances were extremely good on it. And those two pieces sat together really well. And when I did put this together, the, uh, the bottom plate was reversed and it made no difference whatsoever because if you flip it 180 degrees, the holes are still going to be in the same spot. They're, you know, they're symmetric on, on that piece. Uh, so at, at this point, they're just starting to uh, cut that piece and check it to make sure everything's nice and tight there. And there's not going to be any wobble whatsoever when I put these two pieces together. Uh, the bottom one here and the top one, they both got cut um, a little proud and then just had a very fine file go over them just to take them down a little bit to get those things uh, as tight as I could possibly get them without having to press them in. And as you can see, that's just about to the point there where it's uh, good to go. Just a touch more on the file and then that's it. Uh, so the next thing, you know, taking this thing and just tapping it in. And I, so I guess you can't see it kind of got pressed in, but uh, give it a little bit of a tap and put the plate on top of it. Now, when I set this up, I did have to set it up backwards from what they would have been on a, a Precious and Matthews uh, tool, uh, which basically means all my wires, all the screws for the wires that, that went onto the electronics are actually facing the wall and not facing outwards where they're easily accessible. So what I ended up doing was putting all the wires on beforehand and, and uh, then mount it that way. Um, I thought that that the that circuit box was actually mounted with inside of that uh, cover I painted early and I didn't realize it was mounted to the bottom of the base and, and you know it's what happens when you don't read the instructions I guess uh, you have to go back and, and make some modifications a anyways at this point you know um it, it was nice to have that thing all locked in there and of course using using the uh amount of clamps I did just to stabilize it. Uh, at the end of the day, I ended up, you know, when I got the one, two, the set of holes on the back there, and those holes went into a part of the, the top plate that uh, there was no screws around. You can see the bottom ones I'm starting to cut into a set of uh, holes that are already there. And unfortunately on the one, even though I took as many precautions as I could, it slid into the hole and it, it, it got offset. At, th at this point, all I'm really doing here is just putting a little uh, counter bar on that just so those uh, risers have somewhere to actually sit into and, and they're not just, you know, slopping around on the bottom. So got all those four risers in, you know, got, got the lead screw ready to go. Uh, the next thing, though, is to make sure everything's all nice and precise um it's the second bubble on the left that we're going to be looking at here on this and going across like that they're good front and back they went diagonally and they're also good front and back and so now you know it's just a matter of getting the the top plate on there with the motor but i realize now that those holes the motor actually sits right where the holes are so i'm going to have to fix this uh, so the motor is going to come apart, and uh, as you can see, that is not, if I, if I countersink that, that is not going to leave much in there for uh, for meat on the bottom. So what I end up doing is countersinking that plate about 50% of the way, and then I took the screws and I ground them down the other 50% of the way, um, sort of to get a happy, happy medium here that... Uh, there'd be enough meat on there that they wouldn't, you know, torque through. And at the same time, there was still enough meat on the screws to torque them. So you can see there the bottom two where the motor's sitting are flush now and the motor will sit down there and the top two are a little proud. Um, at the time I did this, I didn't realize that that front one actually had to come down too because that's where the, uh, the electrical component sits is right, right back there. Um, so again, yeah, it came apart and uh, got reworked and got put together. Um, from there on in, though, everything went together pretty good. Um, and like I said, th this is the first point 
I pulled the instructions out and now it's just to see where the wiring goes. And it was really straightforward. You know, it, it's just a couple connections on there and everything was already pre-made and you just have to hook it up and off you go. Uh, after that got done, it was just a matter of, you know, taking it back to the Mellon machine. And uh, like, like I said, I had to put those wires in first and here's the test and it's going up. Now we're going to go try it down at some point <laughs> and it also goes down so success it works it works great uh that's going to save a lot on, on cranking that sucker up to you know change things out uh the two wires coming out of there they actually got tidied up a bit so they wouldn't get caught in that, that crank handle there and that is about it for the uh assembly of this priest toolkit to, to make this mill go up and down. And, and like I said, this one, the, the mill was, at, or this kit was actually supplied or made for a couple of Precision Matthew uh, mini mills. Uh, Greg did send me two sets of hardware for this thing. Uh, and as you can see here, the leftovers of four screws to hold it down in the original install, plus a whole set of other hardwares that were used in one of the other builds. I think I used a 728 PM on this one. And everything really, you know, I had to make my own own risers and that, but everything worked really nice on this kit. So the next step, I figured, you know, I, I want a power down feed. So I, I picked up this uh, speed controller here, you know, with an on off switch and a, a, a dial to uh, regulate how much juice it's getting. And off I go to make this thing. Uh, I try to make this thing anyways and uh you know the first thing is, is i gotta do a little bit of electrical work and i grabbed this little end here and it took no time whatsoever to realize it was a really stupid idea to try to be doing that on a, on a grinding wheel so i just put it in the vise and you know filed it down to what it needs uh and, and yeah someday i will get a vise in there that i'll actually drill my table and, and and lock it in i just really don't want to drill the table for a little four inch vise so you know i like to get a six or an eight or something there um needed i needed to create four wires and my original concept on this was just to take the power off of the motor itself like the positive and negative and, and run this controller there so um that's what i first did i just made you know some some wires to to cross over on it and uh, I got some really interesting results. Uh, it's been a long time since I worked with little electrical components. But basically, uh, I, I, I managed to get uh, the, the, the machine to go up. And that was it. It wouldn't come down. And then I managed to get, uh, by changing the wires, I managed to get the machine to go down. But it wouldn't go up. And... It took me a little while and a little thought, and I actually ended up going online and looking at a uh, schematic of what these switches were to realize it's actually like two independent switches side by side. So my next plan was to actually just get the power from the switch and, and, and put this uh, pod in between that and see if that would work. Um, because all, all, the, the way I originally wired, I would have had to put another switch in there that would have actually switched the wires um, between runs. And so you'd have to turn one switch up to get it to go up with the other switch going up and one switch down to get it to go down with the other switch going down. And that just seemed like a headache to me. So I figured just do a little more research. There had to be a way to do this. Um, at least I thought there had to be a way to do this. And this is actually what I came up with. This, this was the first design. And there's two wires being built here that are going into the, the green and red wire coming in off the harness. And those are that blue and brown that go into the power. Then from the power, two wires come out and go into the number one and number four port on that switch. And it worked perfectly. Uh, the switch only goes variable speeds one way, not both. Uh, but I see no need to have a variable speed switch going up. Like, why would you want that? Um, but on the way down, it does, and everything was working great, and I was all happy with myself and figured I got it all figured out. And then when I took it all apart to uh, mount it into it, its box, all hell broke loose again, and I had to, you know, figure out why and what was going on. 
And to the best of my knowledge, the only thing I can think is that I actually put that switch in backwards at one point. Um, it was a little bit confusing until I, I did get it to have a variable speed up and no variable speed down. I figured, okay, well, something just got to get switched and it'll be fine. Just I'm on the wrong side of that switch. If, if that makes sense. So instead of being the top side of the switch, I need, needed to be on the bottom side of the switch. So it was just a matter of plugging some wires in. And I did end up getting this thing working just fine. Uh, it was really tight in that box. In uh, hindsight, I wish I would have got a little bit of box. If I got a bigger box, I would have put all the electronics in that box. But if you look at this, um, there's a green and red wire coming in off the harness. I connected it with the blue and brown because I didn't have the, the green. Uh, the blue goes into the negative on the power on the variable speed thing. And the brown goes in the positive. Then a couple of wires come off of that, which I use the yellow and red. And the yellow goes in position one on the switch. And the red goes in position four. And then on, on pos uh, position two it is the brown switch from the harness. Um, Position three is a white switch from the harness. Position five is a blue and position six is a black. And if you see here, you, you can actually see the handle starting to move there. And if you look at the DRO, you, you can see it move and it ever so slightly going. And I think that would be absolutely um, an amazing thing to have for, you know, if, if you wanted to regulate the speed of a tool coming down and doing some cutting. So, Got it figured out, and uh, I was quite in, quite happy with how this is working currently. And like, like I said, a bigger box would have been great. So the next thing, you know, I, I was going to put this tool in on it and demonstrate it a bit. But uh, and I did spend quite a bit of money on this tool, and, and they never, you know, put that slot deep enough. So there's no way that that will actually fit my machine. So at some point, I'm going to have to enlarge that slot. And, and you see like these ones, the, the slot goes all, all the way up almost to the taper. And in this one, it's really reset from that taper. Um, not the end of the world, but, you know, also with this kit, uh, they, they sent three Allen keys. And this these were in a the plastic bag. I just recently opened them. And I noticed that uh, that one Allen key didn't even fit. You know, why couldn't I drown that down a little bit and, you know, do some quality control on this and made it right? 